Welcome back to Angry Bike Mechanic. Today I'm going to get into rebuilding an RP23 and that is a huge undertaking. Um, sometimes it requires getting parts and tools that you don't normally find. So first off, jumping right in, I remove the eyelet hardware, which is the DU bushings. Do that front, top and bottom and uh, get that out of the way while the shock is otherwise assembled just in case. These kind of big maneuvers, I like to have the, the margin of safety with the air can installed still. And I also remove the silicone ball or bead that is in the pellet valve area. So get that out. That's actually a much bigger pain in the butt. I stabbed myself while making this video. Anyway, take off the air can and you get into it. But the idea here is entertainment only. Uh, don't try this stuff at home. All right, so I'm going to take my uh, 3 16 and unthread the main air valve. I've already extracted the uh, valve core. These get pretty dirty, so you want to clean out that port really well. So what I do, clean as you go, get most of that debris off of there before you set this aside and put it in the pile of things to get new seals because there is a new seal that gets on there. Um, I like to isolate all that dirt with some alcohol and then I slowly go deeper and deeper with my Q-tips and get that residue, that dirt and mud out. So the next step is to release the gas with the nitrogen. So I'm going to take my 530 seconds, don my safety glasses, and we're going to let the nitrogen, what's left of the nitrogen out. I don't think there's a whole lot of nitrogen left in here. Hopefully you caught that. Anyway, you extract that, and now let's extract the needle pal uh, pellet because those are equally silly. Um, extracting that stupid silicone ball is a giant pain in the butt. Some people, some shops don't even put that back. Um, I'm not sure that I want to put it back. That one, that one got me pretty good. Sometimes it's hard to be cautious on every single move, but Needle valve uh, pellet, needle valve pellet, that is out. It's 564. Let's let the gas out. This is where all the gas is. Now, if you're not careful, you'll actually lose the ball that is underneath. There's a, a 1 8 steel ball bearing down there that blocks the bleed port. This is a bleed port. You use it during reassembly as well. So I'm gonna let that finish, and I'll come back to you. All right. So I pulled the need the the bearing out, the one eighth bearing ball, and uh, my threaded set screw, and that's out. So I don't have to worry about any more imbalance of pressure. It makes it so I can safely service this shock. So. I do keep my safety glasses on, but now I just kind of make sure you don't do go too crazy, but it's time to take it apart. Let's just see how nasty it is. Oh yeah, there's so little oil in there. Look at how dirty and gross it is. I don't know if you can really see the residue build up here. It's got a little bit of pink left, but on contact it aerates. That's how much air is in this fluid. Kind of like with a beer, it aerates once it's in the glass. Watch this. Now I've got a an oil basin directly below this. 
See how it aerates? Just keeps my vice lubed. Anyway, the fluid's in really poor shape. So what you need to do now is take some pressure, just a little bit. See that? Don't go too crazy. Just enough to push the IFP down. See that? Now, I don't like the IFP to pop because then you're aerating oil in there. I like to get the IFP to the point where I can just literally pull it out with my finger. Whoop. Oh, well, popped. <laughs> so they are plastic. They're, so they are pretty easy to replace. Um, anyway, it's like this guy is just seen all sorts of, see that blackening? Part of that seal degradation, but the other part of it, the main characteristic of that dark residue is the oil going bad. So if you look in here, you can see that the shock body is actually pretty clean since most of the residue was in the oil part of the chamber. So it doesn't require a whole lot of cleaning in the shock body. All right, so let's focus here on that. Three eighths. We're going to take this nut off here. Keep your safety glasses on because you never know what you're going to find. What kind of extra pressure you're going to find back in there. Did you hear that? I don't know. Hopefully you heard that. There was a bit of pressure, a gas that had leaked into the uh, the port or the bleed or the uh, sorry the compression control stuff. So I'm going to grab just a tiny tiny uh, uh, hex key, probably my 0 0.50 inch, drop it down through there. I'm gonna bring that, oh, look at that. Got a little needle. This is typical of the uh, CTD even to see this little guy. Little needle control with a little tiny spring and a whole bunch of little, tiny little washers that you can see kind of gathered there. Don't lose that stuff. Pop this guy off. And there's going to be some seals in here that you end up replacing. Um, this little guy. See that little seal? That comes off. And then there is a urethane seal in here. Super hard durometer, that white seal. Yeah, there we go. You're gonna replace that with a fresh one. All right, before we uh, take the eyelet off the shaft here, I always like to remove as much as I can in the form of rubber. So there is a seal here, and that is just the main air seal that gets replaced typically during a normal service. And that's it for part one. We're gonna continue this in a series of videos because it is so involved and time consuming and I don't wanna do long videos. All right, so please like. Please like, 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 and subscribe and share these videos if you like what's happening here and if you want to see more. And as we get closer to 1,000, we'll start to get details on the DPX2 repair giveaway that I want to do.